And now it's time for Stay the light. The light is good. So my favorite moving average, at least now, and I know you probably want to party with me, right? <laughs> is the 30 EMA. And when I was doing a little Landry light analysis a couple of weeks ago, or let's just say when the market got a little iffy, whenever it was, about a week or so ago, I was amazed that we had mostly green for a long, 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 long time. In fact, the first downside Landry light that we had was just recently when we turned red. And we only had one shoe bars of downside Landry light. And you kind of have to squint your eyes to see them on the charts right there. And then I think this one is just, I almost said something vulgar, a, a tiny bit <laughs> from my sailing days. We have, uh, when you want to bring the sheet in a tiny bit, we have a term for that. I'm sure some of you guys know it if you're sailors. But anyway, I was pretty amazed that there was so little red for such a long, long time going all the way back to November. Now, just again, Landry Light lows are greater than moving average for uptrends. And for downtrends, the highs are less than the moving average. Pick your favorite moving average, exponential or simple. We'll take a look at both. Yeah, there you go, John. John knows what it is. <laughs> well, it's a it's a specific type of of yeah, just a hair, but it's a specific type of hair, which I don't want to demonetize things and offend anybody. But you can see we now are starting to get a little bit of downside Landry light. Now, again, not to beat the dead horse, but somebody's gonna ask me, I promise you. This just tells you the number of days it's been since you've crossed the moving average. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's an owl outside my window. And he's saying, whoo, whoo. <laughs> but anyway, these are the number of days, not the magnitude, but you can see it was up about 40 something days here. And then it made a little kiss to the moving average. So there's no Landry light. And then it starts climbing up again. And as I'll show you in one minute, these little kisses of, of the moving average with some caveats can actually be a pretty good signal. So if we look a little further back in time, and I know you want to party with me, but this should get you excited. And, and this excites me when I can see something so simple. I mean, you have to realize how much grail hunting I've done and how much just staying up late, late, late at night and waking up early programming trading systems trying to figure out the holy grail and then i've come full circle to just something really 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 simple now but hey that looks like some kind of crazy indicator not really it's just telling you what's already in the chart look land your life from here to here so this is how many days okay and it's something that i asked uh metastock to do years ago when they were doing my indicators and I didn't know what it would look like. And I said, well, let's just count how many days. And then before you know, I'm like, well, that's a really cool little thing. And it's such a great visual representation. And it could also give you a, a 30,000 foot view. And maybe what you might want to do to get a 100,000 foot view is change it to a weekly chart and see how that shapes up. And if we get time in a little while, we'll do that. I listen to my recordings of this. I'm always like, well, I have time and we'll do this. And never seen to do it so just remind me if that's something you want to see but anyway you could see it got choppy back here it didn't come apart but you did have some red so you want to be cautious some red some green some red you know flip it back and forth you know the market is kind of choppy and you might listen to your hands and sideways when you see a substantial amount of green and you can say maybe 10 days or more on the upside then you might have a trend developing by the way, you could be a little slower to get long a market because the an overall market, not an individual stock. As the saying goes, markets take the escalator up and the elevator down. Kind of like the little, what's the little man? Price is right. You know, I often say this, you know. Do -do 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 so this is just again a 30 EMA. And I eyeball this, but I'm starting to like this little, I hate to call it an indicator because it doesn't indicate anything, but it illustrates, I like this little illustrator to show me how much Landry light we've had up or down. 
I've done quite a few presentations where I do the Tarzan speak, you know, good when you have the green, bad when you have the red. And it could be quite, quite simple. Now, when you're in the middle of the market's getting chewed up or losing money, then it could be of some concern. But you could see this whole period of time, it was mostly good. A few, just a few periods of red where you might have to be concerned. Now, one thing that amazed me was whenever the market begins to spill a little bit, by the way, I dust off the 50 day simple moving average. I usually don't plot it, but when the market gets a little iffy, you'll start seeing it more and more, especially like in my trading service every night. And just for fun, and again, I know you probably want to party with me, but just for fun, I went in and did a 50 day Landry light. And this is something that the programmer added which is kind of cool. You could change it from an exponential moving average to a simple moving average. And in some cases, simple moving averages are pretty cool because they're a little slow to catch up. And sometimes you want a little lag in the moving average, believe it or not. But when you're using a system that's price-based, even though it's a moving average, okay, you're not sitting around waiting for a moving average crossover, which by the time something crosses over, it might be too late. The, the bear market might be over by then. What you're doing here is the price space indicator. And this combined with the 10% line, to my surprise, actually triggered, it's a weekly longer term signal. It actually triggered, as I've said before a thousand times, during the pandemic slide before we even had a weekly, I mean, a daily bow tie. But anyway, what amazed me was you go all the way back to, last November using a 50 day simple moving average and it was all green. Now there was a couple times where the market intersected the moving average, okay? But it came back without any red Landry light. You gotta go all the way back to, like I said, November to see some red in the Landry light. So that's a long time. And by the way, the one thing I wanted to mention earlier if you go in, if you watch the recording of this, I know if you can't sleep at night, I guess, right? As Greg Moore says about his stuff jokingly, but uh, I'd say it too about my stuff. <laughs> Just don't operate heavy machinery after viewing, right? But it's really not that many signals. We had one buy signal when last year, and then we are possibly closing in on a buy signal, but it might be five years before, I mean, a uh, sell signal, I should say. But it might be another five years before we have another sell signal. So we'll have to wait and see with the TFM 10% system. Now, looking at this, it's, there's nothing to worry about since last November, right? I know. Uh, but now we're starting to get a little red. It's not the end of the world, okay? Don't sell the form. You might want to have it appraised, but don't sell it just yet. But do pay attention to what's going on, and let's see if it begins to materialize. And again, there was no red during that entire period. It was amazing to me, at least. And now we're starting to get a little bit of red to the downside. So we have to pay attention to that. Now, earlier, this is really amazing. Of course, it's kind of dangerous to give the market maybe that much room. But if you were a long, 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 long term trend following, I think it's pretty darn cool that you can go all the way back to last summer and I'll have to back it up a little bit further, but I think June, maybe mid June or early June, and there was no downside Landry light during that entire period with the 200 day simple moving average. Now you can get pretty far away from the moving average and that would hurt pretty bad going all the way down but if you were somehow able to take a long, long-term view and you got in the market in the 3,000s and it's up here in the 5,000s, well, you can survive a little bit of a sell-off down to that moving average. I would caution you and, and say maybe you might want to use the TFM 10% system or something else and get you out a little bit earlier because that's going to help you fight and run away. Something slow like this, not that there's any guarantee that the market can't crash from new highs, but I think Greg Morris has done some research to where a market doesn't crash from brand new highs. It tends to sell off for a little while first, and who knows, it might not happen in the future, but something like the TFM 10% system, easy for me to say, 
got you out before the Great Depression. I, don't, I think a few of you here are old enough to remember that. I'm half kidding. Uh, it won't be long before I'm old enough. <laughs> start, people start to treat me like an old person now. I'm like, oh shit. Yes, sir. <laughs> but anyway, if you have a signal that's a little bit more, I don't know what word to use, robust maybe, it'll get you out a little bit more quicker. But it is kind of interesting that the 200 day moving average would keep you in some amazing trends using the concept of Landry Light. And as I said before, it works in all markets. And this is Bitcoin. And you can see it was green for a while, red for a while, went green again. And now we've got to deal with some more red. Okay. And then, of course, eyeball the chart. There's no buy or sell in here that I could see for now in Bitcoin, maybe in some of the some of the SHYT coins, some of the shit coins, but not many. And by the way, Bitcoin hasn't, or crypto hasn't been fantastic as of late, in case you were wondering. I tend to make a little, lose a little, make a little, lose a little. In other words, just kind of grind it out. I only have a few positions on right now. But you can see we now have some downside Landry light. And it's uh, interesting. I don't know if anyone has done this, but it'd be kind of fun. And again, you probably want to party with me. But on stock charts, you could plot in the old stock charts, at least. I don't know if it works in the ACP. I think it might. But you could plot, let's say, dollar sign SPX colon and then dollar sign BTC USD. It'd be kind of interesting to see what relationship Bitcoin has with the stock market. And right now, it seems to me, since we're in a bit of a liquidation market, at least at times, that Bitcoin for now is following suit with the stock market. And you can see we get a little red. We get a little red over here. Now, during that big green phase, as I showed you in prior webinars, and I did play a lot of this, and I do remember being long. I remember getting long this signal here, the Landry Light pullback, and I remember it coming all the way back in. I'm like, oh boy, this kind of sucks. And then fortunately, it took off again. And then I did buy into some of these subsequent rallies. And you can see that this last one here came below the moving average. So I wouldn't consider that a signal anymore. And once you start getting downside Landry Light, it's more than just a pullback to the EMA. So really simple system, uh, just in case you're wondering, keeping score, 10 to 20 bars, 10 is gonna give you more signals, 20 is a little more conservative, but you also need to look at the magnitude of the move higher. You don't always wanna wait for it to come all the way back to the moving average, but if you're just talking about this setup, 10 to 20 bars above the moving average, lows above the moving average, in other words, green land your light, and then a pullback to the moving average and look to get long, if and only if, the trend begins to resume. And I don't think it gets much simpler than that. And I see a couple of new guys come into the, to the Facebook group or newer to trading, and they're trying to figure out everything in the world. And I've seen this for the past 20 something years. And they're just sponges trying to figure out this indicator and that indicator and all this other stuff. And I would encourage them to tap the brakes a little bit and just find something stupid simple like Landry Light pullbacks and trade that. As I often preach, if you can't trade one pattern, you're not gonna be able to trade 10. And as Linda Rasky once said, all you need is one pattern to be successful. And I firmly believe that. And sometimes I wish I would go back to trading just one pattern when I'm in a bit of a drawdown. 